everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here with Stephen Russell, and you've written a book about non-resistance. You've studied an awful lot of church history. You teach here at Faith Builders. You can kind of see some of your work here. You just did a class. Um, and let's just have a kind of off-the-cuff conversation about church history and um, non-resistance and what we can learn from that. And I know that you've written about... Uh, the Mennonites in Germany becoming Nazis. So why don't we think about that? So yeah, I, I did. Um, I graduated from Sharon Mennonite Bible Institute. I did my uh, my graduating thesis on the Mennonite Nazis. Uh, mm -hmm. So it sounds very strange to mm -hmm. say that in the mm -hmm. same sentence. But you had Mennonites who basically, mm -hmm. over the course of time, mm -hmm. lost their values of the two kingdoms mm -hmm. of of nonviolence. Yeah, there's quite an interesting piece of history that went into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a, a Mennonite guy who was. Uh, I knew him when I was about your age who then was, uh, he had been in the military. Uh, he was one of the Nazis. Really? A Mennonite guy. Wait, wait, him. where did you meet him? Uh, he was in southern Germany. Wow. That, now, it's long enough mm -hmm. ago, I don't know that I remember his name. Mm -hmm. um, I also, in our own community, we have a young man who was 16 and was not Mennonite, mm -hmm. but was drafted at the very end. Has a very sad story. Wow. Uh, they were taking him acro across, I think they were sending him from the, eastern part of Germany to the west to fight the, Al the Americans and Canadians and British. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just outside of, of uh, Dresden when mm -hmm. the Allies firebombed it. Mm -hmm. And to this day, he says, he says, why did they do that? We were beat. It mm -hmm. didn't help anybody. But they bombed in such a way. They had, they had actually come to realize if they bomb a certain way, it kind of makes like a tornado and draws in air and just makes this wild fire and kills wow. everyone. If it doesn't burn you, it asphyxiates you. Wow. And he saw that he was just, he was fortunate. He was just outside of Dresden. And the next day they were going to move through there and go to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the Western Front. And, uh, you know, that's something he experienced. And then mm -hmm. I, when I was 23, I had an opportunity to work with a tent crusade in Germany, all mm -hmm. German, mm -hmm. and um, Lutheran minister who got me the job. Mm -hmm. had also been in the military. I don't know wow. if he was Nazi, but he fought for Germany. On then. the German side. Yeah, he fought on the German side then. Wow. That's, so, and, and his huh. sister, his sister um, was, he was a minister and his sister was a minister. And she told me, she said, we could have known. She said, we closed our eyes. We were afraid. Hmm. So we could have known what was happening. Um, you know, stories mm -hmm. like uh, um, a train might come to, there was a place in, in one of the cities where they'd bring, handicapped children and they never left and she said we could have known hmm. that they were being killed this is at the early point when they were killing sure. people the generation that uh, either was teenagers or 20 something and fought for Hitler a lot uh, a lot of them were very very um, hmm. sad about it a lot of them became Christians because hmm. of the uh, realizing hmm. how bad it was but um, you know they felt like the Allies in World War I had mistreated them. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason they, yeah. that Hitler could uh, get them to Stir follow Stir up him. the population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's, a, there's a family here uh, at our winter term, and the, the wife's uh, great-great-grandfather or something like that mm -hmm. left the Alsace because of the impending war between Prussia and France the, wow. in 1870. Mm -hmm. And there weren't many, but, but he was non-resistant. He was in an uh, Amish home, and they sent him here. They just sent their son who was eligible to be drafted, and they wow. didn't want him to be drafted. If there were, so wow. the ones who still believed it left uh, in the late 1800s, and there were hmm. just none left. When Germany came together, and Germany uh, is one of the last states in Europe to unify. And mm -hmm. it's, it's after that war with France. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, 1870, 1870 something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that war is used as mm -hmm. the way to um, unify the, the German states. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did try to unify about 30 years before that. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work. But, but they did get a conference together, and they were talking about a constitution. And at that conference, one man said, it, where I'm from, there are Mennonites, and I think that they don't go to the military. There were at least two Mennonite um, representatives, really? and they were from another part of the, uh, Germany, and uh -huh. they said, we don't want any special privileges. It, we want to be Germans just like anyone else. So here was a non-Mennonite saying, maybe we should put into the 
constitution a, a provision for those that are COs, conscientious uh -huh. objectors. Mm -hmm. And then two Mennonites that were part of this whole thing said, no, 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 we're we good. We're just good. So Wow. So right there you have a very deep root of nationalism, like nationalistic yeah, pride. You have nationalism mm -hmm. and you have, like I said, those Mennonites and Amish that really held tightly to it, they, uh, many of them had left in the previous uh, mm -hmm. century, and then after the Napoleonic Wars, uh, many more left. Mm -hmm. During the Napoleonic Wars, it was hard to get out. But as soon as the Napoleonic Wars were done, a lot of Amish came to the uh, U.S., and those were the ones that still held to this. Mm -hmm. So once you get rid of them, there's just a scattering. It's and a long, slippery road down, well, and by the time you, and then World War I, you start having a lot of, well, and then I started joining, then World War II, it was wholesale. And, and, yeah. and all the men, you, we, you can go find um, hmm. the magazines or the newspapers that the Mennonite churches in Germany had during World War I, wow. and they're just full of, here are our brave boys that died uh, the last wow. month fighting for their homeland. Well, so, okay, so then here's the, here is one question. At that point, would you still say they're Mennonites? Because, like, that's such a core value is non-resistance, and for them to be sent, uh, yeah. They conceive of themselves as that. Now, here's what, here's what I would say. I would say it's not that, that non-resistance is not just a core value for us. It mm -hmm. actually is a core value of conversion. Wow. But mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say Christians who don't believe in this are not Christians. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, they have lost a good, a, 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 a tremendously important part of what Anabaptism teaches. But they still self-identify that way, and I guess I would say I hope there's a little bit more of a germ there that we could, mm -hmm. or a little ember that we could, you know, Rev yeah, uh, yeah, we could we could uh, fan it and bring it Revive back that. to a flame. Well, but I also yeah. think we we are in a time when we can be talking to our brothers and sisters outside of the Anabaptism mm -hmm. who are saying things aren't going right. Yeah, no the, kidding. You yeah. know, and I'm a Christian mm -hmm. and I'm seeing it and, mm -hmm. and in my church is allowing things that historically have not been allowed. Mm -hmm. oh, everything seems to be going to pot. And I think we have an opening to talk yeah. about believers, a believer's church that is a discipling church. Mm -hmm. And as a discipling church, it expects separation mm -hmm. from the world, not isolation, separation. And I think mm. separation has three aspects. There are three nons and three positives. The nons are nonconformity, non-accumulation, and non-resistance. The positives are in the same order: faith, hope, and love. Wow. And mm -hmm. and those are those are those are meant for everyone. And but what has happened is, especially in American, I'll speak of that because I'm an American. Mm -hmm. In the American setting, for so many of us Christians, our Christianity is more American <laughs> than it is hmm. biblical or Christian. Over in Europe, mm -hmm. all the churches, except for the Anabaptists, were um, state churches. Mm -hmm. And every state had its own religion. So if you wanted to live in England, well, the, England was a little bit different, but if you wanted to live in France, mm -hmm. there was a, a little bit of a allowance for a few Protestants, but it was essentially Catholic. And if you <laughs> lived in Saxony, you were going to be a Lutheran. And if you lived in Bavaria, you are going to be Catholic. And the church and state worked together. So the, the mm -hmm. church uh, supported the state, and then the state would uh, get rid of heretics, etc. Mm -hmm. That's what, what it was over there. When you came to the New World, some of the English colonies had state or co colonial churches. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If you didn't want to, if you were a Puritan and you didn't want to submit to the Congregationalist state church, mm -hmm. what do you do? You go into the frontier. You get away <laughs> from civilization. So um, the United, first the British colonies and then the United States, mm -hmm. because of the vast area, um, and also uh, in the Constitution it was written in that the federal government cannot have, uh, cannot um, support the, the, the church. It's, it's to allow all churches their mm -hmm. freedom. The state governments could still have state churches, but not the federal government. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last uh, state to get rid of its state church was Massachusetts. But my point is, here there was so much land, there was so much freedom, there was so much space. If you didn't like what the people were telling you, mm -hmm. you just went somewhere else. Then the revivals hit, and they split mm. almost every church, and so you had the, the more conservative people probably resisting revivalism, and others saying, no, this is giving us more life, 
And so you have churches splitting. And so what you have is a vast multiplication of churches. Mm -hmm. But it's all because there's so much freedom. And that's what we Americans really worship is freedom. Oh, and so okay. we love uh -huh. it. We, yeah, we uh -huh. want to worship God, but we love it that we have this freedom. We can do mm -hmm. what we want. We can start our own church however we want to do it. We can be conservative. We can be liberal. We can be anything. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's the freedom and the uh, because of the immense uh, land that we lived in and the possibility of going anywhere mm -hmm. you wanted to and doing what you wanted to. You could remake yourself into whatever you wanted you, to be. And, and that's yeah. the American dream. So mm -hmm. we, we are more, mo many of us are more American than we are Christian. We're mm. Christian, but we're more, and that's a creeping problem among us, conservative and Anabaptists, mm. that we're, we are also uh, um, in danger of, of letting the American dream and being an American mm -hmm. overwhelm what our forefathers said. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one reason when they first came here, they published, the first really big book published in the United States was The Martyr's Mirror. Interesting. To teach the Mennonite and Amish boys and uh, that what, what their forefathers had died for over in Europe, there was so much freedom here. It was so uh, appealing to think, well, maybe we should help out and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah. Corn this is why history is so important, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because, because <laughs> our, our, especially my generation, is super confused right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because they're like, I don't know what to do with this polarization that they're seeing and mm -hmm. where, where do we fit in? Like, are, are we or aren't we? And it, yeah. Well, one of the big questions today is uh, what is a human being? And mm. one of the issues that comes out of that is, is our sexuality, mm -hmm. how we express that. And so the question of same-sex marriage and all that kind of thing is, mm. is, I think the key issue is what does it mean to be a human? And that's what the church has to address. These mm. other things come out of that. But one of the things we have to be careful about is we always have to love that other person. And I think uh -huh. sometimes the way they, our young people hear, some people talk about these situations, mm. um, they hear these people as haters. They demonize the other person. They yeah. demonize, the, that yeah. is not what we're called to. We're called mm -hmm. to to embrace and love the other person and mm. call them to what they're meant to be as a mm. human being. Yeah. And that may mean struggle. You know, uh, all of us, if we're Christians, we, if we're really Christians, we struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's always something in me that, that um, isn't quite yet in line with what God wants. And so mm -hmm. there is going to be a struggle. Uh, if, unfortunately, for some people, it may be in this area of sexuality. And just telling them it doesn't matter, doesn't help them. Mm -hmm. And if we are right, and if, the, if, if God really expects a certain approach to that, and they're encouraged to do whatever they feel like, in the end, they're going to end up at the very bottom. And they're mm -hmm. going to crash. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, people like us need to be around to help them. It's not going to be easy. But Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Wow. I mean, maybe we need more uh, Anabaptist historians. You think? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just we did just interview Kyle, and he is getting a master's degree yes. in that field, so yeah. that's that's wonderful. I, yeah. I tell some people one of the most frustrating things to me is that the people that graduate here, uh, that go on to finish mm. their college elsewhere, and sometimes go to grad school like Kyle, mm. they tend to go for English. And I say, why does why haven't I been able to get anybody to go for history, church, church history? Yes. yes. So th that's been very frustrating. Well, maybe this this will help inspire a few people to go, <laughs> to go do it, uh, to go for that. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, that was fun. Thanks for okay. to following that rabbit trail. I yeah. I really enjoyed that actually.